I promised that we would have a special guest throughout the season discussing Michigan in preview format, looking back, looking forward, all of that. Well, it's a big one that you're not going to want to miss up here in this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy, I guess it's Friday at the time that anyone's going to see or listen to this, Uh, but as you can see, let's see, can I point correctly? Nope, I can't. Over there, we have Mr. Karan Higdon, former Michigan running back, joining us as our new uh, our new analyst that is going to be uh, previewing and looking back and all of that. Karan, welcome, man. Super excited to have you this year. Absolutely. Thank you for having me as well. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverine's Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. We're going to just jump right in. Karan, you were on the ground just like I was. You were there at Michigan Stadium taking in everything. Before we even get into the game, I mean, this was, what, your second time back? And you took in the full tailgate experience? It was a kind yeah. of a new deal for you what was this what was that whole experience like for you coming back and and experiencing everything that michigan fans kind of partake in on a weekly basis yeah it it was really cool you know i got to get got a chance to get back last year for the msu game uh that was a great experience and then you know i got got in a little bit earlier this year to really just experience the whole entire uh atmosphere and i can tell you man from the, the time the sun rose to the time the sun went down, I, I had nothing short of a, a great time. And just seeing the way the fans engaged, you know, with the, with the, with the game and just pregame, it, it was different. It was fun. What was the highlight for you? Because I saw tagged pictures kind of all over the place of you. Yeah. I don't know if you're crashing people's tailgates or if that was kind of set <laughs> up or, you know, just all of a sudden people are just sitting there having, having a couple pregame drinks about to enjoy the first uh, the, the season opener and, you know, our Michigan football's hero. And by the way, Karan Higdon, uh, as my, one of my youth pastors at my church called a, he called a hero. We called you a hero. Uh, so what, uh, was that all planned? Did we, was, were you just stumbling upon people's tailgates? How'd that work out? Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, um, we were doing a, a little segment with, uh, with Buddy's Pizza. And so really just get fans engaged with Buddy's Pizza as they now will be in the stadium and really just bring a recognition of Buddy's Pizza. And, and, without, and throughout that, you know, people discovered it was me. So that was also pretty cool to just get that recognition and love for, you know, the amount of effort and work I've put into the, to the program while I was there and, you know, into what I'm doing now. So it was a really good mesh and it was a really great chance to engage with fans. And again, before we even get into everything, like you were just saying off off camera, like one of the things that you're doing kind of as an extracurricular in your life now is you're you're coaching some youth football. How did yeah. you get into that? What is what is uh what is that like? What's uh what's that experience been for you? Yeah, I mean, I've always done you know coaching as far as like seven on seven and like a, a lot of people, uh, kids that play on my my youth seven on seven team. Uh, but out in Texas, there's a youth football team that asked me to volunteer some hours and, and come coach up some of the kids. And so it's been pretty fun. I've been out there uh, working with the kids, teaching them a little bit about the logistics of football and really understanding the game uh, from a higher level perspective. And it's been really, really cool just seeing how the kids take in that information and then convert it and put it into action. All these memories are starting to flood back about for me about your time at Michigan. Cause I'm starting to remember you being involved in that. We, I, it was the one Chris Evans camp at, in Wyandotte, I believe. And, yeah. and I, I remember just thinking how cool it was watching both of you, you know, the, the two big running backs on the team working with kids. So that's awesome that you're continuing to do that. Uh, let's, let's get into a little bit about what we saw on Saturday Michigan, obviously, we're, we're nearly a week removed at this point, but Michigan did beat ECU, East Carolina, 30-3. to three. There were some good things. There were some things that were maybe a little bit questionable. Still the number two team in the nation coming out and making their season debut. 
what were what were the things when you were sitting in the stands and you were watching the game? What what were the the biggest things that you were pleased with that you saw from Michigan in the game? Effort. Effort was everything, you know, and I, I think that's huge, right? Like those guys have so many goals and ambitions that they want to achieve this year. And regardless of what it is, no matter how big or how small it all starts and begins with effort. And you saw that endlessly all game long on Saturday, a team that really just has bonded and really is, is playing for each other, playing for their coaches. You've seen them, you know, honor Coach Harbaugh. Like, the program is together. And that effort that goes alongside that, it, it's, it's incredible to watch. I love seeing the progression. And that, that was, it's definitely something that, especially defensively, and, you know, with, with the lines, I mean, the defensive line didn't get home, but certainly they were pressuring Garcia quite a bit. Uh, it, there's a lot of people that are out there that are kind of feeling like, okay, you know, this is a problem. You know, they want, we want to see sacks, you know, just like, you know, everyone wants touchdowns and sacks, right? That's what they want from either side. Uh, they got yeah. touchdowns on one side, certainly, but uh, on the other end, they didn't get the sacks. Was was there any concern when the, for for you watching that game when you walked away? What what was your feeling about the defensive line's effort? To me, at the end of the game, Michigan won, mm-hmm. and they almost had a shutout. Doing that in college football alone is very hard and difficult, and for it being their first game. You got to understand that ECU has prepared all year long for that front. They've seen it last year. They've seen it the year before. Michigan has become a powerhouse for their defensive front and their defense in general. And so teams like ECU, let's first off acknowledge they're not a low-tier team, right? They came prepared, ready to play. It started off as a little game, right? Mm -hmm. The first couple possessions. And they prepared just like Michigan prepared. So – I wasn't worried at all, and the score honestly reflected it. Games go like that. Sometimes you're going to get sacks, and you're going to get people on the ground, and other games is going to be a, just an upfront war. But they held their own, and they were close to a shutout. And to me, no worries. And it was, as I've said on earlier episodes this week, the saddest three points that I have ever seen <laughs> scored in a game. I I was like, put the first team defense back out there as soon as I saw them lining up for the field goal. I'm like, what are you doing? I understand ECU has a streak that they want to uphold, but at the same time, it's the saddest thing when it's like, okay, congratulations. You did your job against Michigan's fourth string guys. <laughs> guys who have never been out on a football field before. Uh, you know, well, I guess they've been out on football fields. It'd be weird if Michigan was recruiting guys that way. <laughs> had never played football, uh, but nonetheless, it was their first time out there and, and they're like, okay, good job. You, you scored against some freshmen. That's very yeah. cool. Um, run game. I actually, let's, let's hold a beat. Let's talk about the run game here on the other end. Uh, I do want to uh, obviously get your thoughts. I'm sure that you have some thoughts about what you saw on Saturday, but we'll get to that here in just one moment. Before we do that, uh, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates that are available. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Now, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is certainly the way to get that guy or woman, whichever way you want to go, the perfect person to help your team grow, to help your team win your own championship. Uh, It's so easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn jobs. After you do that, you add the uh, hashtag hiring frame, the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile that spreads the word that you are hiring with simple tools like screening questions. You can make it very easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experiences so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Just like how Michigan went and dipped into the transfer portal to find the right people that can help fill this team out to hopefully win a championship at the end of the year. That's what LinkedIn jobs is for your business. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one, in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. 
All right, we are back here with Karan Higdon, former Michigan running back, the first Michigan running back in the history of the game to uh, to get a uh, a holding call, I believe it was. <laughs> he was carrying the football. Um, never seen that before. You'll never see it again. Uh, it was one of those amazing moments. I was there on the sidelines watching that unfold, very confused, just not, like I'm sure you were. Um, running game, uh, obviously it wasn't the most exciting output for what is widely considered to be the best duo in uh, in college football uh, with Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. Uh, obviously, East Carolina, that their plan was to – stop the run game and they did everything that they could in order to do that. Uh, what did you see out there and how do you feel like the running backs fared kind of given the circumstances? Yeah, I think, you know, Blake and Donovan both have really high expectations, you know, as they should, they're very great dynamic, dynamic backs, a dynamic duo. They've showed that um, and illustrated that several times. And so sometimes, you know, games don't always turn into that big game, right? Some games are just ground and pounded games and, when defenses are really stacking the box um, and doing what ECU did to really contain the run, those are games where you just got to put your, your helmet down and really get those hard yards and, you know, wear them down, right? And hopefully by the fourth quarter that'll open up and, you know, you can shoot a big one. And you seen Blake bust out a couple, get some big runs, right? He had one up the left side line to set up uh, and then score a touchdown. And so it's, those games are just real ground and pound games. Again, they're dynamic. I'm not concerned. I feel like they did their job. And so I'm excited to see what those two can do this year. How, how hard is it? Now I've got two, two questions for you kind of still pertaining to the running backs. Yeah. Uh, how hard is it when, when you're going into a stacked box like that to, and you, you know you're not going to be able to get a lot? How like difficult is, is it, number one? How frustrating is it? Because you, you know that there's not a heck of a lot you can do when they're committing eight, nine, 10, sometimes 11 guys to stopping you. How, how frustrating can that be? Yeah. I mean, again, you know, guys like Donovan and Blake, you know, they both have high expectations. And so with that, it, it can definitely get frustrating, but I think they both have the experience now to understand that, you know, those things just takes patience, right? When defenses are set up to stop the run, it comes down to just putting your hat down and getting those hard two, three, four yards, right? And as you do that throughout the game and you continue to do that, eventually defenses, somebody has to lay down, right? And so you're either going to be the hammer or the nail. Um, and games like that, that's where that comes into effect. And, you know, the more you be the hammer, the more you'll have an opportunity to really get a big run and hopefully eclipse that goal that you have for that game. But games like that happen. And, you know, I think that as long as they continue to do that, continue to improve, I think they're going to be good. Now, kind of a corollary to that, that Michigan's made it kind of a point now last year, they, they called Blake and Donovan co-starters, but I mean, it really was Blake's show until his injury. And Donovan certainly had his moments. There were times where he was leading, right? He had more rushing yards against Penn state last year, but it wasn't really his time to shine per se until he got to, uh, until Blake went down with injury. Now they were, we're seeing Donovan had more snaps than, than Blake did. You, you found yourself in a couple situations as a running back where you were splitting time yeah. in the room. Uh, you, 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 it, in 2017, I mean, it was Chris Evans to start, and then Ty Isaac got a, got a start, and it was kind of a third of the way through the season when finally you cemented yourself as a starter. Even in the, in the next year, you were certainly still splitting a lot of time, but you were at least the, the guy who was getting the bulk of the carries for the Wolverines. Uh, how how difficult is it to get in a rhythm, it, it, if it is, when yeah. when you're kind of splitting time like that? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, I think it, it definitely it, it definitely tampers with the ability to get in a true rhythm. But I think the way Michigan does it, as you continue to get into it more and more, you know, it makes you that much better because at some point you got to get with the program, right? Like you got to be able to get into that mode, you know, maybe snap one, snap two, snap three. You can't wait to snap 10 to kick into that mode. And so that's where you as a player, you really have to attack it and find a way and do whatever it is you got to do to be able to kickstart as fast as you can. 
And that's where the frustration can come in because a lot of things you can't control, right? You can't control them putting eight people in the box. You can't control them blitzing when you're getting the ball. But what you can control is just your ability to prepare so that you can get the, the fastest kickstart as possible. Now, the, the beneficiary of East Carolina's strategy certainly was J.J. McCarthy had uh, completed 87% of his passes, only missed four, 26 for 30, 280 yards, three touchdowns, uh, just obviously had himself a game. Uh, certainly he looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He was accurate. He was decisive. He was making NFL caliber throws, doing things. Uh, as Devin Gardner one, uh, put it earlier this week, he, he took some elementary concepts and, and acted as a graduate student with them. Uh, what, did, what did you see from, from, from JJ and how have you seen him kind of grow from when you first started seeing JJ out on the field two years yeah. ago, last year, uh, to this point? Man, I think the most notable thing to me that stands out to JJ as a player is just his poise, man. Like, he really has a grip on his decisions. He has a grip on the play. He has a grip on the game and understanding the defense and what he's going against, what's being put in front of him, uh, and him navigating through his reads, right? And, you know, there was a couple of times where the pocket, you know, collapsed a little bit, someone got through, and you saw JJ continue to make that extra effort. And I think that's what makes him special. Right, he had a couple of touchdowns off of that, and I think that all goes into his poise, man. So it's amazing to see him stand back there with that confidence and continue to take the game as he has. Well, let's continue talking about uh, obviously Michigan. This is the Lockdown Wolverines podcast, although I do sometimes digress into things that no one cares about, Star Wars mostly. Um, okay. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue on by discussing what you want to see from Michigan. Uh, this uh, this Saturday as they host the UNLV Rebels. They haven't done so since uh, 2015. I mean, I, that was your freshman year, right? 2015. That was my freshman year. I remember that. So they're, they're coming back to town. We're going to get into that here in just one moment. Before we do that, uh, listen, I, I've mentioned it multiple times on this podcast uh, of the struggle of getting the insanely expensive tickets to see Justin Bieber last year, last summer, uh, Sarah and I went, we were down on the floor. We ran into Jim Harbaugh. It was a very weird experience, but it was a stressful day to the day that it was like, okay, because that the tickets were already on sale forever because they're pre COVID. And then finally we got our floor seats and it was an amazing experience for us, but buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun that you will have. From the flash deals they have, the fact that you can get last minute tickets, it's everything is easy to find. You can buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. It could be comedy, it could be theater, it could be a concert. Whatever is out there for sales, events, you can find them on game time. I think my favorite part is images of the seat views so you know exactly what you're looking at. I remember when I went and saw Wicked, went on a date back when I was in college, took this girl to see Wicked. We had a column right in front of us. That wasn't a good time. Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all of those types of things. So game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. That means Saturday, three o'clock. You're like, I want to go see Michigan UNLV. You can find those tickets on game time. Get exclusive flash deals for tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. And uh, buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, you're done. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Karan, we are gonna kind of delve into the next week. I'm, I, I don't think that we need to break down uh, what UNLV brings to the table. I think that that's it. Not to, not to impugn the rebels by any stretch. They, they are coming off of a win. They have Barry Odom uh, leading the charge there uh, in Las Vegas. 
Uh, but in a just world, the number two team in the country will beat any group of five team in the country because the number two team in the country is expected to beat basically any team in the country except for maybe number one. So let's talk about Michigan and expectations for what Michigan can do to improve. What is it that you are looking for? Now, Jim Harbaugh, your former head coach, used to always say, or still does always say, you make the biggest improvements from week one to week two. What what are some, uh, you've gone through that, right? What what are some examples of that type of improvement that one can make? That might be a kind of nebulous question, but yeah. Yeah. do your best if, if I'd ask a really broad question there. Yeah, no, I mean, I think there's various improvements that a team can make from a week to week basis based off of what they see. It could be something as little as, you know, making sure that their pass protection is being improved or maybe it's their run blocking, right? Getting double teams and making sure that they're getting the right person and, you know, coming off their blocks at the right time. It could be um, starting faster on offense or starting faster on defense, getting more defensive turnovers or attempting to get a defensive, you know, uh, a score or maybe a special teams, right? Proving on kickoff, kickoff return, or just, you know, getting a touchdown through special teams. You know, that's always a goal that a lot of teams have. Special teams is a key component of the game. And so those are just some of the insights of the different objectives that could change week to week. Right on. And uh, I'm curious to see who are those players that that step up. We certainly have seen moments where players make, I've been saying this all week as well, uh, even I think going into week one, uh, this is before your time. I'm sure you weren't paying any attention to Michigan football at this time, but I remember back in 2011, it was, you know, Brandon Heron on the defense, two pick sixes against Western Michigan. Uh, and he was all over sports center. It was like, did Michigan find some kind of unheralded gem on the defense? And then he kind of disappeared for the rest of his Michigan career. Obviously fans aren't hoping for the same to happen to Roman Wilson, who just had three touchdowns. When you start to become, you've been through this, you start to become a focal point of an offense. How do you kind of keep it when people are like, we need to stop that guy. You know, that, that certainly was a moment. We need to stop 22. We need to get, keep him from, from, you know, gouging us up the middle. And yet you still did it. How much of a challenge is it when you start to become a guy that people know about that uh, when the, everyone's trying to, stop you in particular to keep going. Yeah. Uh, you know, the game's the game, right? Like the game's going to happen. Things are going to happen. You can prepare on a piece of paper all you want, but you know, if a guy has a certain skill, he still has to show up and you still got to stop him no matter how prepared you are. Uh, from a player's perspective, you know, the consistency comes into that, how you approach practice, how you prepare throughout the week, the, the week, you know, are you watching film? Are you preparing? Do you know who you're going up against? Um, and then just continue to trust yourself and your skill sets and play free. Uh, I think as long as you continue to do that, your skills and your hard work is going to show. And that'll overcome, you know, most of your opponents. Well, I am I am excited to see what this team comes out with. What are you looking forward to most in game two? Game two, just more confidence. You know, I think the team showed a lot of confidence in that first game. But getting that first win, getting over that hump, getting the jitters out, now I'm looking to see that, that confidence from the start, jumping out fast, getting up fast, right, and and have a good Saturday in Ann Arbor. Well, it will be another interesting one. We're gonna see uh we're gonna see Jay Harbaugh in the first half as the head coach and Mike Hart in the second. I don't know really what to expect as far as scoring. I mean, a 30 to 3 is certainly not what I would have expected in the uh Jim Harbaugh era, but he wasn't on the sidelines. That's very much more of a Lloyd Carr type score. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I, I, again, dating myself as a student, as a junior, I remember 2006 Michigan, I don't remember what the actual score was. It was like 34 to 17 and I was in Las Vegas and my mom and I drive driving to the airport and I'm the, my mom wants to brag. Oh, my son goes to Michigan and the guy goes good football team. And I said, yeah, if only they would have actually beat Vanderbilt with, you know, whatever. So I don't know what to expect with the score, but what is your score prediction for this game coming up on Saturday? Yeah, uh, I remember playing them uh, my freshman year, and I want to say game ended up like 27-6, 27-3, something like that. Um, we jumped out fast and then kind of went down in the end. I think this team here, I think they got it. They got the confidence. They got their eyes set on some really good things. 
And so I, I think, you know, I like a, a 35 to zero game. All right. Oh, 35 to zero predicting the shutout. I don't know if I'm going to be that bold. I don't predict shutouts too often. I have done it. <laughs> uh, usually it smacks me right in the face. I'm going to go with Michigan. I like the 35 number. I'm going to go 35 to 10. I, I still th- I think the defense is really good. And I think it's probably better than what people are really understanding here. But I still think that the that based off of kind of what I saw from UNLV this last week, 300 some rushing yards or 200 something. I, I'm not exactly uh, remembering what it was. Uh, I, st- I feel like they're going to have some success here and there. Maybe it's late in the game. Um, these these coaches are going to try to be the guardians of victory, as Jim Harbaugh said. So that's my yeah. prediction. For now, it'll probably be different in writing. I have no idea. It's 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 a time, at the, and I've taken all kinds of sleeping pills at this point. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. That's Karan Higdon actually over there. Camera's backwards. Uh, thanks, Karan, for joining us. Can't wait till we continue this uh, series throughout the season, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. All right. We'll be back with uh, another show on Friday, the Michigan mailbag. If you are watching this before, let's say 2 p.m., get your questions in on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, And then after 2 p.m., then unfortunately, that will be closed and we'll do that show. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will be back soon. Peace. Peace.